Hi, it's only Carl James Langford again. I'm back with a little bit more history and archaeology. I often get asked about King Arthur. I get asked about lots of things that are myths, legends, facts waiting to be discovered and told. One of the places that I have visited several times and I've done a few videos about this a while back, is St. Peter's Church, back by Brinner, at the foothills of the good old Ron the Valleys, basically. It's a strange place to find and to get to. It's well on those maps, but back when I first visited there, probably over 30 years ago, I can remember that the landscape was very different than it is today. Back then there were more trees, more hedges. Do you know what? More of the church was visible and you could find it. And the local farming fraternity were okay directing you over there. But in recent years all has changed. Dominated with a wind farm. And I've heard little rumours here and there that if you go looking for the church and you ask local people, they'll say they don't know where it is. It's odd that, isn't it? It's owned by Blackett and Wilson and others that believe in the link that it has with King Arthur. The fateful King Arthur, you could say. I was asked when I decided to start this series of videos that I do almost every day. I was asked about Eric Talbot yet again. Eric Talbot is a chap that I spoke to a few times on the phone. And I never met him in, in the flesh, actually. But he was, a, he was the archaeologist who was excavating at St. Peter's. He was the one with the trowel in his hand, excavating away. Directing, I'm told, university students from his own university, Glasgow. He was also a fellow of the Scottish Antiquaries, which I'm proud to say that I'm a fellow of the Scottish antiquaries today. Unfortunately, Eric Talbot's association with the excavation tells several different stories, and even that is shrouded in that word controversy. I do know, know a chap who worked with him, he was actually a volunteer there, a chap by the name of Graham Oxlade, and some of you watching this video will, would know Graham, he was very much involved in the Ronda Metal Detecting Society. I think that's its full title. I think it's still going. And Graham told me of a great respect he had for Eric Talbot. In fact, I respected him as well, very much so. And he had a shop in Penagraig. But unfortunately, Eric Talbot's luck was not good. He lost his wife. He lost his daughter. And I don't need to say any more. But I will say that his excavations were undertaken, I believe, with good spirit and by the sounds of it from what I can work out they were well organized and th there was a great cover over it and so on. Now I've heard that there's he wrote several reports about the excavation but that aside the fate of the church now 
is of great concern. And what I mean by that is that we find that it's in a ruinous state and the gravestones are toppled and it needs protection. And unless we can give it some kind of protection, the church at St. Peter's may be lost forever. And I know Ross Broderstock and a group of others wanted to try and fence the church off or save it. And I know fencing has been placed around the site before and it's just been removed and ripped away by the local farmer. But it, it, the site itself is in need of protection. Whatever you feel about it, whatever you feel, whether it's got any links with King Arthur or it hasn't or whatever, but it needs some kind of protection. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this video now and I'm just going to wonder if people can respond to that and the sentiment about St. Peter's, what should happen to it? Needs a bit of signposting as well and whether the, you can get the local people on board to believe in the site because it, people are buried there. You know, it's a memory for lots of people. Anyway, this is Carl James Lanford. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.